when you deploy um, a cluster on EKS, so that's the that's the Kubernetes by Amazon, if you will. Uh, by default, it's going to use the AWS VPC CNI. So there is a good, you know, like a good tongue twister is to expand that acronym. So that's the Amazon Web Services Virtual Private Cloud uh, Container Network Interface plugin. Uh, and so what's special about this? It's going to allocate IP addresses in VPC subnets. So at first, like, okay, what is this about? What's a VPC subnet? I I'm not going to assume that everyone is familiar with AWS. So very quickly, um, on AWS, you can have these VPCs, like it's a basically a virtual network where you can plug your, your instances, like your virtual machines. Um, and so you, you, know, you, you get IP addresses there and you allocate the, you assign the IP addresses to the VMs, awesome. Um, and this plugin will let you uh, get IP addresses, like VPC IP addresses, and assign them to the containers, which is pretty great because then you don't need to have an overlay network or some kind of encapsulation, etc. Um, but the downside is that, you know, if you look how is this implemented, um, basically you cannot assign an infinite number of IP addresses on an EC2 instance. You can uh, only assign so many IP addresses per ENI, Elastic Network Interface, like a, a virtual network interface. Um, and you can only have so many ENIs per instance. And these limits depend on the type of the instance. So that makes for some pretty complicated math. Well, exaggerating a little bit, but you know, basically that means that on a T3 medium instance, like the one that I'm using at the moment, there you go, the limit is 17. So if I get a bigger instance, then, then I'm fine. I can, I, I, I can have more pods. But okay, wait a minute, 17 pods on that instance. Let's do a little bit more math here. Um, so these instances have four gigs of RAM. So let's say 4,000 megs. Okay, let's say I'm going to remove one gig for, you know, kubelet and all the Kubernetes things. So I have three gigs available for my applications and I can have 17 pods per node. So that means that on average, I can have about you know, 150, 200 megs of RAM per pod. So if I plan to deploy some huge monolith in Java, Ruby, or whatever, um, you know, then that's fine. They're, they're, my pods are going to probably be bigger than that, and no problem. However, if I plan to deploy lots of um, microservices needing way less RAM than that, then I'm very likely to hit that limit pretty soon. So you might think, okay, let's get some bigger instances and, and let's see what the limits look like. Like here, we have a very nice sounding R6GD16X large. Uh, I don't know exactly what that stands for, but that sounds very impressive. And we can have 737 pods there. That sounds great, except I think this is an instance with a few hundred gigs of RAM. So when you do the, the division, you know, when you do the ratio, it's still not that great. Again, not a problem if you have big pods, but quickly a problem if you want to have lots of really small pods. All right, so... Uh, that's the problem. Now, so you might think, okay, why would I want to use that um, AWS VPC CNI plugin thing then? Well, the advantage of that plugin is that it's, it, it's making the pods first class citizens of the AWS network. Uh, for instance, when you route traffic to pods, uh, it's going to go like straight to the pods. You, you don't need to go through an intermediary uh, thing. Uh, so that's uh, that's pretty nice. Uh, 